So this is my 1969 GT6 Mark II. It's been off the road since 1983 and it's time to properly get on and, and resurrect it. I've had it for nine months now, but I've not been able to get on with it because I had some other things to do. Namely, I was finishing off my Triumph Herald and then someone ran the back of it and that's a whole other story. Anyway, we're here now and the first thing I need to do is tear the rest of it apart. So the car was partly stripped when I got it and it was partly stripped even more before that. So although I got it off, he bought it where the chassis was separate. There's the uh, body and the chassis had been split and the chassis wasn't even rolling. So he kindly chopped it back together for me. So at least it rolled and I was able to transport it. But now all this, everything needs to come off. And then I think the first thing to do is go take the body off, check the chassis is straight. So we know we're starting from a good base and then start to do the repairs on the body. But there's not a lot of them. It's actually in really good condition. See how that holds up once we start taking paint off, but I'm pretty, pretty confident. Anyway, let's, let's go on with it properly for the first time. Okay, so it's slow going. I've got I've got the red lights off. This one's well, both them, both sides are fighting a bit because the the heads are coming off the the screws, and this one I've just mangled completely. So uh, I have to get a bit more violent on it, I guess. I've got some penetrating oil, and bumper iron bolts. Not done much else really. I've been having a bit of a poke though, as you do, and yeah, this one's a bit a bit crispy looking. But we can deal with that. It's also it's turned out to have had more work than I thought it might have done. See, there's a, a blob of well, probably weld there. This lip's actually been replaced. It's making me wonder whether I put a new boot floor in, given given the distortion, and it is doesn't need repair around the edges. And I'd say this silk must have been done as well. Because if you look, you can see these are stitch welds. And they, they, there's, a, there's a gap. They also, I mean, that door's shut. It's a little bit proud, so there's some work to do there. Oh, and this door's not the original door, because if we look closely, you see some red paint. That doesn't look like primer, it looks like red paint. And the lock's been painted over, because, of course. Okay, I've got a spare door. Can't remember which side. And this one looks like it might still be the original seal. Possibly. It's definitely had paint on here as well. You can see the spray, overspray. Oops. That door fits a bit better along the bottom edge. And I think some adjustment we could push it in a bit maybe. It's nice there. Well, it's a bit bent in there. But I've just got to keep going. It's just feeling a bit. A bit daunting. I've not done this deliberately before. I've kind of wandered into it. So, no, I think I've gone round. I'm chopping it apart as well. I've gone round on the bonnet and marked out where I can find damage. Anyway, I'll keep taking bits apart. I don't see how this is supposed to come out. <laughs> it won't move that way. Can't pull it up. Can't tilt it that way. I 
keep going. I persuaded it. A little bit of crop values. Just kind of got the just just a little push to sort of nudge it away from the wheel arch and it slipped past that bracket and came out. What's really nice is how clean it is. Probably going to do some sort of sealant on it, but it's a good starting point. It's clearly been beam painted at some point too. Well, that's looking a bit scruffy. Anyway, one step forward, one other step forward. You can see there's been a bit more patchwork in the corner there. Uh, you know, there's always more to do than you think there is, isn't there? And I was, expe <laughs> I was expecting there to be more than I thought there was. If you know what I mean. So I'm wondering if this valance looks so good because it's been replaced. Well, this looks like gas welding all along here. And the paint's chipping off to reveal red oxide. And it's chipping off as well. I wouldn't expect that from the factory. It's definitely been welded all along. I wonder if the whole valance has been, added, um, been replaced. Interesting. Now we're getting into it. Look. That's all behind the top suspension and shock mount piece, whatever it is, in the wheel well. Okay. I think, so this bit is welded on. And I think there's supposed to be an equivalent in there that gets screwed on. It's kind of between that point and that point because you couldn't have it welded because of the tank that makes sense let me get the petrol tank out so I have to have a check on that looks easy enough I mean it's a it's curvy bit of metal you can make one of those that's not it's uh, not terribly difficult well new day let's do a door So this has so far been a proper uh, Haynes manual experience. It says to remove the glass stop, which I think was the bit here, and wind the window all the way down, and then it disengages from the winding mechanism, which it does. And it then says just lift it out. It doesn't want to just lift out. It, uh, <laughs> I, I ended up having to get the rear track off. I did loosen the quarter light and the front track, but I don't think that was actually necessary. Maybe not, but then I was kind of able to shove the window towards the front of the door, take the rear track out completely, take the weather strips off, and then lift it out. So I'm going to keep going and get the rest of this done. Okay, so there's this bracket, a little, there's a bolt just down there, and that's what's stopping the quarter light coming out. So hopefully that's going to move. Oh, and this one at the bottom is a bolt onto the quarter light frame as well. There's one at the top too. Okay, so in general this door is looking very solid, which is great. It's going to need some work along the bottom lip, but I'm hoping I can do it with just like opening the skin up a bit and can deal with it like that. But we shall have to see when we get to that stage. I have left the lock on for the moment because while building the car I'm going to be want to be able to open the shot and latch the door and check it all still fits so I think that can just stay as it is for the moment. I'm going to start ripping through the interior. I should have to get inside. I've, I've hoovered this but it's still disgusting. <laughs> I'm about to go crawling dash to take the
panels off because these are supposed to be fixed on from behind. So look at like what that is like. Um, I have a bit of a concession, <laughs> got something to lie on rather than just the cross member. I'm not going to try and film any of this, but we'll have a look at what the fixings look like when I've got my. So I thought that out. it wasn't wasn't attached wasn't actually attached with anything. So there's a little tab there, which would have sat there, and the screw for this piece went through it. Otherwise, it was mostly just the, the heater ball vent thing to hold it on through here, which I think is different to the the square tail Spitfires, which had this sort of dash arrangement. Anyway, see how let's get this off and see how much that one fights. Okay, so where have we got to? Not much dash left. Got all the wiring out. Well, the main loom out. Pretty much, pretty much the interior is done. Well, the dashboard area. I've got to get the heater matrix out, the heater box, and then the dash top and vents and things like that. It's getting there. And how long this half a wasp's been there? Managed to get the heat hoses off. There was a lot, looked like a lot of filler around this one, which worried me. But there doesn't seem to be any holes, so well, we'll find out more when we start tacking it with uh, wire brushes and that. Interesting thing, the uh, that's the battery earth is on the on the heater box bolts. Looks like it's. Going to be the original one. It's feeling like this must have water in it. It does. I can't imagine the matrix is going to be in the best of shape. And the original Smith's label. And this. Marked 68. Okay, so you join me this morning in trying to figure out this sunroof. At least how it comes off. I've got the wiring out from the, all the wiring out the front and the rear. Everything's clear from behind the dash. Most everything in the engine bay, but I've uh, I've left the master cylinders. I'm leaving the wiper mechanisms and things like that, just because then I don't have to store them anywhere, and they're not gonna. They're not going to get in the way too much or suffer too much. It's mostly the glass and the trim that I've been concerned about. I really wanted to get that squared away and hidden away. I'm not trying to remove the dash top because to remove the dash top I need to remove the windscreen. And I don't want to remove the windscreen until I've had a chance to check on the shape of the body and potentially stabilise some bits of the windscreen that are pretty grey. I mean the other side particularly because I don't there's enough metal rotten or been taken out that I don't want to risk changing the shape so anyway I've got this free actually shots and ah fully opens which is nice I'm just trying to work out how it comes off so I'll keep going with that actually remove the roof without removing the frame you just have to, have to twist the there's enough give in the the runners that you can twist them and lift one side out and then the other side however I do need to remove the frame did need to remove the frame because I want to take the headlining off and I want to take the headlining off because I don't want to destroy it 
I think it probably is still need, need replacing, but you know, for the moment, let's just not melt it with grinder sparks. But I am once I've once I've taken the headlining off, I'm going to put the structure of the frame back on because you know, obviously there's flex in the roof because it's just a bit of sheet metal now hanging with no support. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of work to rebuild that. I do kind of want to, as I've no idea what that white roof is like. I don't like the idea of white. Worth investigating. <laughs> it's also going to be a lot of work to try and fill in the hole. And I'm, I, I'm, I, no, I prefer, at the moment at least, I prefer the idea of having the sun, sunshine roof. Anyway, I'll get this headlining. Or get these edges of headlining pulled out and see what more needs doing to get that done. This bit of hardboard actually survived okay. And that, I've got to very carefully remember that's how that goes because you can imagine you fit the headline in and then realise you should have screwed the catch underneath it. Let's try and avoid doing that. It's getting more piles of parts and less car. Very close though. Almost on the whole of the body. It's just a pe peeling away the edge of the headline in at the moment. And then passenger door. Probably in a position where cutting holes in it is not going to be too terrible. Right, so I still haven't figured out how to get the quarter lights out. They look like they're held on by magic at the moment. Because there's nothing, nothing obvious in here that you might be able to undo. And I won't come any further out. I think even if I take the trim off the, not necessarily going to hinge over the wing, over the eye though. Anyway. I'll figure it out eventually. The line is hanging around. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the, the hoop, one remaining hoop out. We've had three originally if you could look at the holes on the far side of the roof. Okay, so it's out. Uh, what I was able to do, positions here, was I just rotated it all the way around and then it came out quite easily. And I think it's supposed to sit up against those. Obviously there may or may not have been some equivalent on the missing ones. And I believe that if you do have three, you're looking for colour coding. So I've got a green spot on my front one, and obviously no other ones, because they won't go in the wrong spot. Or well, you maybe they'll get them in, but they won't, won't be right. Okay, that. So for, except for figuring out the quarter lights, we're done. Okay, onto the quarter lights. If you remove the trim, they do hinge past the wing, and there's a row of screws down the side, inside there. So they should come out. Someone's obviously gone to some effort to try and rust proof this as well, it's full of wax oil. And I don't know if I spoke about this already, but I'm I'm now sure, now I can see at the top of this, very sure, that this has had a wing. Because you can see these are these little stitch welds. Which should be plug welded from the factory. So it's had a wing. It's had a sill. Out of sill. Which is interesting. I wonder why. No, it could be rust. I wonder expect it to have rust that much in... 13 years, who knows. wonder if there's a bit of a clue as to dates in the switch gear as well, because the ignition switch and I think the flasher unit were dated 76 and 77, so late 70s, eight years old. It's coming to a, towards the end of its design life. Maybe that's, maybe it had a uh, bit of a refresh. Anyway, let's get that quarter light off.
Okay, it's all a bit scene of devastation at the moment, isn't it? But this is mostly stripped. I'm going to do the door, otherwise, ready to start doing some actual check the chassis or the bodywork sort of thing. So I'm going to get that door stripped. I'm going to have a big tidy up. I'm making an inventory of what goes in what box, so at least it's findable. I've got to find places for it all to live, and then next time we'll be doing some actual work. Providing nothing goes wrong with the other car. Um, so, thanks everyone for watching. If you got to this point and you like what you see, please subscribe. If you're not already, uh, completely free. Just means just means YouTube thinks I'm doing better. <laughs> thanks for everyone who's commented, left a like, whatever. It's all appreciated. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.